You know, I love a church that shouts Amen. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you understand the importance of Amen, you will shout it very well. Amen is a very powerful, powerful force. Amen is my power. Amen is my song. With Amen, I get victory in prayer. Amen is my sword. Whenever I say Amen, in the name of all our names, demons tremble and God is glorified. Amen is my state. Amen. amen. Now you are getting it. When you say amen, darkness trembles. Light comes. And that's why they don't want to open your mouth to say amen. Because when you say amen, you are practically saying Jesus. He said, I am the amen, the faithful, and the witness, the true witness. Revelation 3 verse, uh, I think verse 19 or so. But I'm sure it's choice, Revelation 3. So when you say amen, it's a very powerful word. Amen again. Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. But I will say thank you because we are good. Thank you for your minister here, your servant. Thank you for his, your grace upon his life. Thank you for his, your mercy upon his life. Thank you for his family, the wife and the children. Thank you for helping you to sustain this place. Only you can sustain a church. By human standard, just one month, everybody is scattered. But with you on our side, we know you will keep your church. And thank you because you have been keeping this place on his behalf. We say, blessed be your name in Jesus' name. And thank you for this morning that you have brought us together in your hand, under your feet to land. Lord, we beg of you, please speak to us. Speak to our families. Speak to our lives. Help us by your Holy Spirit. By the time we're going back home, may we all be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. We subject every thought to the blessing of Jesus Christ. Let every thought obey you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Say good day, man. Yes, I love that. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We work for you in Jesus' name. I say amen. Shall work for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. But God's grace is talking on the topic that says the kind of men God needs for this generation. The kind of men God needs for this generation. You will agree with me there are different types of men in the world. But there are some that God needs. Before I said, among a thousand, I only found one. Which means to see or to find a good man is very rare. So if you are married to a good man, please take care of him very well. Because good men are rare. And not only as married men, I mean as married women or married men, even if you have a son, please raise him to be a good man. There are so many women out there looking for a good man, but only few are seen, or good men, but only few are getting. So please raise your son to be a good man. So much that any woman that marries your son, we want to call you a blessed. Call you blessed. In Proverbs 31, when the good man was being described, a virtuous man, it got to a point, they say, a children, a children, call her blessed. I pray for women here that one day, your son-in-law or your wife-in-law will call you blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we'll be discussing the kind of men God needs for this generation. What a very wonderful topic. Can you pray for our daddy that gave us that topic? It's a very wonderful topic. And I pray as we, are, we go through it quickly, it will be blessed in Jesus' name. So men, please listen carefully. And do men too, please listen. I will try to be simple as much as possible because of our younger adults and our children that are also listening as well. Titus chapter 1 from verse 5. Titus chapter 1 from verse 5 that we read in our test this morning. I hopefully run through it again. For this cause, let I did. That was Paul talking. Say, for this reason, I allow you to stay back at Crete, that you should set in order things that are wanting, that are things that are not the way it should be. So I allow you to stay there, that you might correct them and put them in correct perspective. Then ordain elders in every city. And that was set of men 
men that can oversee, that can take charge as long as I am not there. Set up men, set up elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Now, let's say the quality of the men that was been set up. Remember, the title is The Kind of Men God Needs for These Generations. There are very many men, maybe in billions, all over the world. But do God need all the men? Maybe for procreation to popularize the world. May I want not just end there in Jesus' name. But there are some that God specifically needs. And here are their qualifications. Just like applying for a job, vacancy, and they give you the qualification of that job. Maybe BSc, maybe OND, maybe HND, whatever the qualification. Maybe some I say additional qualifications. Maybe ICANN, maybe master, maybe PhD. So here are the qualifications of the men. Elders. And I know we have elders here. In Jesus' name. Number one, let's see from verse 6. If any be blameless. In another translation, it says, If any be without reproach. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Now, for a bishop, if you say, that you be thinking that talking about bishop as in uh, Oyedeko. No, 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 no. The word bishop there means overseer. And it's practically the same word that was called elders in verse 5. So the word bishop means overseers. For example, the husband is the overseer of this family. Is that correct? Though I have an egg bone here, but in my advice, my family, how I run it, but doesn't have the financing. Am I saying the truth? Who has the financing in that place? I'm his brother. I can go to him and say, do this, do this. It's a pure, just a piece of advice. Who are the financing in his house? You are not answering me now. He has the financing. So he's the overseer in that place. I can advise the pastor here. Pastor, why not do this? Why not do that? But the financing in this church be not to who? Not to any minister. No matter how brilliant or how good you are, how anointed you are. As long as you are not the pastor, he has the final say. So the a overseer is the one in charge. So as for the family now, who is the overseer? The father or the husband. Not even the father, the husband. He, he is a husband first before he becomes a father. A good husband will be a good father. But a bad husband, no matter how he try, he can never be a good father. Am I making sense? Is it correct? So now, for a bishop, an overseer must be blameless. Repeating what he said in verse 6. And as the sea word of God, and not say will, not so angry, not given to wine, no striker, and not given to fiddle looker, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he, as he has been taught, that he may be able to sound, he may be able to buy sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayer. I may just base my talk this hour on verses. If you understand verses, that is God bless you. Thank you. If you understand verses, the other verses will be quite easy to understood, to understand. So let's see what verses say. Number one, he said, from where you have read, talk about overseer, I'll talk about you, a manager, a director, a father, or a husband in particular of a place. And the first thing verses say, if any be blameless. And I'll tell you from other scriptures, say, if any be without reproach. Because being blameless is not talking about being perfect. Because you see blameless now, I think is a perfect man. No. There is no perfect man anywhere. Am I saying the truth? Yeah, so, but if any be blameless in that, if it's without reproach. I've explained that very shortly. And secondly, say, if it's without reproach, not if any man be perfect, but if he be without reproach, if he be blameless, the husband of one wife. Then they say, having faithful children, not accused of riots, wild behavior, weird behavior, and not unruly, disobedient. If any man fit to that place, that tree, then the other one can easily fit him. Then that is the kind of man that God is looking for. Let's start from the second one. If you understand the second one, you understand the first one, you understand the third one. The second one is if you be husband of one 
wife. The first one is, if you be a perfect man, a man without reproach. The third is, if you be a father of good children. But the in-between is to be a husband of one wife. Let's start with that one this morning. Men, relax. No problem, okay? When you talk of being one wife, men are always very... Uh-huh. It's where. Well. And the women, they will like it. Tell them. It should be one wife. God will help us in Jesus' name. All right. So let's see that. Now, if a husband be a man, and a hus- a, another a husband of one wife. Let's go back to Genesis, where the whole thing began. Genesis chapter 2, I read from verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 to 8. Quickly, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 to 8. Time is very running, running fast. 7 say, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Who did he form? Please be following and be answering so I can be interactive. You can get the class very well. And the Lord God formed who? Man of the dust of the ground. Women, please take note of that. And he breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The first gift God gave to man is his very life. His own life. He molded him, then he breathed into him, he became a living soul. That is the first gift from God to man. And that is why, by nature, because woman, woman too was formed out of man. Abi? It was from man that God took and formed the woman. He formed man perfect, independent, but he now picked something from him and used that one to pick a woman. So, the, so women too inherited that from man, being the first thing that God gave to each one of us, breath of life. And that's why men by nature love themselves. Not selfish love now. It's natural for human beings, even women, to love ourselves. The Bible said, love your neighbor as what? Which means you must have loved yourself first before you can love your neighbor. So love yourself your neighbor as yourself. And Ephesians 5.3, it says, husband, love your wife. It says, nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself. Which means self-love is natural to man. There is no man that doesn't love himself. We love the life God gave us. And that is the first commandment that God gave man. I mean, that's the first thing that we generated for man. Is it natural for man to love himself? It is expected that you love yourself. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Be mindful of your own self, your own life. It is then you can extend the same thing to others. And if you love yourself, it means you love God. Because you are in the perfect image of God. You can't love yourself unless you first love God. Because before you even see yourself, before you know you are alive, when God created Adam and he breathed into him and his eyes opened, the first thing he saw was who? God. Mami Tokwe said, Mami Tokwe Labi, she said, according to me, Ojo go reni. Because when Adam was first, the first person he saw was the person that made him. Just like a child. When a child is born and the eyes open, before the child even see himself, I know how it look like. If I see my picture now, I know I am the one there. Abi? But before I recognize how I look like, the first person I must have known and see was God. And how do I see that? I see him through you. Because we are all in his image. So the first person a man should love and to be able to replicate that love to himself is his God that gave him that life in the first place. And in verse 8, see that verse 8, that same place we read, Verse 8, he said, And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. We said this in our last meeting, men. And there he put man whom he has formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree. And that he, no, let's see verse 15. Let me know that verse 15. God has planted a garden eastward. And he put man in that garden. That is his home. So the next thing that God gave a man is his home. And that is why every man wants to go back home at the end of the day. When they finish working, I'm not in heaven now. There is no man that doesn't have a home. And when you finish from work, you want to go back home. Because after God makes you, 
as a man, the first thing he gave you is home. When you see a man that doesn't like returning home in the evening, something is wrong somewhere. Because by nature, every man wants to go to his home. Then in verse 15, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden, that place he has put in his home, to dress it and to keep it. So the first thing God gave to man was his life. Second thing was his home. Third thing was what? His work. Dress this garden and keep it. And that's how you see men love their work. Especially if it's the work they like and it's bringing money. Men, by nature, love their work. Then the next thing God, to man, God gave man in verse 25 or so of that change Genesis is a woman. He said he's alone. Let me make him and help me. And he gave him a woman. What was the first thing God gave man? His life. Second thing, his home. Third thing, his work. And, and, and that after that, the woman. And that is why a woman will always compete with the work of a man. Uh -uh, why is it that you work, work, you don't come home? You are always very busy. I want no call, shall I change your name? I mean, not your family. You will always compete with that man with his work. Because by nature, his work came first. By design, his work came first before the wife. And that is why it is written let every man love his wife as himself, not as his work. Because that will not take deliberate efforts to love the woman more than your work. A man will naturally love his own and will take deliberate effort for him to love his wife more than he loves his work. It will take deliberate efforts for a man to do what? Love his wife more than he loves his work. And that is why he said, love, yeah, just as you love yourself more than your work. Amen. If you are flowing, say amen. amen. So a man will not or may not love his job because he doesn't like the job or the job not paying well but every man loves to work there's no man that doesn't love to work unless he's a lazy man that's why they call him lazy but by nature every man loves his work so while loving his work and doing his work diligently and God is blessing him and that work please be following carefully we are treating why what God wants in a man and want to show him maybe the kind of man what God wants and the first thing that the man must be a man of one wife. If you don't pay attention to this man's story, you won't get it to. So pay attention very well. Now, when God now created man and gave him his wife, and having given him his home, gave him his work, and he said, now, here is your wife. Now, if a man loves his work, and in doing the work diligently, and is good at his work, and uh, the work is bringing money, and the man is a happy man. By nature, women around him will love him. Please hear that very carefully. Wife. Am I saying the, the truth? Women around him will love him. And because women around him love him, there's a possibility of being distracted. There's a possibility of him noticing that this woman is in love with me or she like liking me. Now, this man, I told you before, that the first thing after his life that God gave him was his own. So he loved to go back home. Now there is a wife at home. Are you following, please? There's a wife at home. Let's assume he's married. I'm, I'm talking to married men in particular. There's a wife at home want to go and meet. Now after work, he wants to come home and rest and find comfort in his home. He can't find rest and comfort in his work. It's a workplace. But home is supposed to be a place where he will go back, he will relax, he will rest, then he will have comfort. Now, if you now get back to that home, remember there is a woman in that home. Abby? May God give understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Now, when you go back home, you want a place where you can have comfort and what? And rest. Now, if you get to that home and there is no comfort, there is no rest. Emotional-wise, it's not stable at home. That's why some men, when they are closing, they go to their friends go out in the evening. Just about three days ago, me and, wife, me and my wife, we went out in the evening around six or seven. I mean, saw a new spot in our area there. I mean, saw many men there. And she said, it's a new club around. You will see enough men in the evening when they close. You know why they are there? They don't want to go home because at home there is no rest and there is no 
comfort. So they will, they will not look for opportunity to get those creating one for themselves outside the home. So if they come home, emotionally there is no rest, sexually there is no comfort, mentally it's not, it's not well, because there is somebody that is nagging and making noise, and ready as soon as he opens the gate, he knows that I'm in a place. As soon as the man opens the gate like this, his head will be swearing, and there is like a kind of headache just coming on. Because there's somebody in the house that is waiting to show him the paper that I want to see. Psychologically, it's not well in the house. And uh, in terms of advice, he can't go home and say, my dear, this what happened today in my office. And the woman give him a sensible advice. It's not like that at home. Peace of mind is missing at home. Remember, he has been working. And now he's going home. Peace of mind is not there. In time of uh, courage, to get courage, is discouraged. His ogre talked to him anyhow. His younger colleague, they didn't respect him. Or at work, they substantiate him. What was supposed to be his own, they didn't give him. No promotion. Money is not coming as he me. There is no man living, any man that his head is correct, that is happy when his wife is hungry. And his children are not welfare. There is no man like that alive. Unless an ungrateful and a man that doesn't want to work. Take that from me. Every man wants to feed his home. So here is a man coming home and he's stretching at work. All the money he expected from work is not in his pocket. He's not getting it. And he's coming back discouraged. Especially want to get home and meet a woman that will encourage him. But here is our friend. He got home that, praise the Lord. If that is not happening, then there's a possibility God by nature every man wants to go home and have rest and have comfort. Immediately get to that place and all this in that mission and not in their right perspective. Then immediately in his heart he begins to consider the possibility of another home. Maybe a club. Maybe a joint. Maybe be another woman outside. Immediately those things I just mentioned and more of them are not in place. May God give women where sensible, sensible wisdom in Jesus' name. Immediately those things are not there. The man begins to consider the possibility of another home or another woman. It may not be a conscious thinking, but you will see that before that because there is no comfort emotionally, no comfort sexually. If women know what man, how important that other room is to men, you will you will not allow him to be deprived of it. Because these things are not there, the possibility of being distracted and considering another woman is high. Most, if not all, married women, most, if not all, married men, at, at one point or the other, consider the possibility of marrying again another wife. Because something is wrong somewhere. And we are this case. The man cannot go home and enjoy his house. Because there's a woman in the house that doesn't give him all this in a mention, emotional rest, comfort, mental rest, sexual rest, advice that is needed for him to go on to encourage him, to give him going, man, they don't worry, all will be well. It may be hard now, but I believe all will be well. Most men that still, still because of a woman, either their wife or somebody outside. Because when you steal the money, finish, you won't eat the money yourself, you give to a woman. Praise the Lord. So if the wife is the third, that doesn't respect him, because there's not enough in his pocket, or the man is not as rich as he ought to be, and the wife is not giving him respect, a woman talk back, he say one, he say two, he say three, she say four, and the woman will never give this man respect. That woman is like a nail in a punch shot tire. You know, his tire has punctured, and there's a nail inside. It's a matter of man, a time. The nail will be what? Deflated. If it's too blessed, those days, immediately to be deflated. If it's a, I mean, if it's a, you know, that tube, those days to go down. If it's too blessed, it maybe managing and managing. But it's a matter of time to go out, to go down. It's like a man that married an illiterate or a woman that is not as smart. When something happened to him, the wife is not encouraging, the wife is not helping, the wife is not, is not uh, sexually or mentally or emotionally comforting to him. Immediately, everybody will know. But it's an educated one, the smart one. The woman is very smart. And the man too, because the man is very smart, they will look as if all is well outside. The man too will be managing. And everybody will think all is well. 
but nothing is actually wet. I said a nail inside the tire. Okay, run your jo dear dear ni licky small small. Give them time. It is scattered. And we say, but we thought this marriage is doing fine. Now see how the whole thing has functioned in the matter of time. Say a woman that didn't give his husband correct respect. It's like a function nail in the tire. Take away his respect. It's naturally we begin to migrate towards another woman to give him the respect that is not lacking at home. It's lacking at home. Every man wants to be respected by his wife. If he's not getting it, and there is somebody in his office or in that club where he's to go and drink. I do those who are not here in Jesus' name. Or in that neighborhood, there's another woman that will see him and kneel down and see him and respect him and see him and give him and honor him. The possibility of his act moving toward that direction is high. Because the one at home is not giving him that respect. A man wants his wife to adore him, to see him like a small God. After God, the next thing, maybe one time you talk to the woman and we say that to them, when God created Eve, it, where did he take him to? He took him to a what? To the man, Adam. And God did not give the woman any other extra job. If a woman are working today, they are getting money, God bless them. As if your wife is working and getting money, please value her, respect her, honor her. Because it's not her job. Her job is that she's given to you. You have to feed her and take care of her. But our economy, our nation has turned this upside down. Most women now work. As a matter of fact, in most homes, in 8 out of 10 homes, the wife is the one feeding the family. Today, in 8 out of 10 homes, the wife is the one what? feeding the family. If your wife is like that, please honor her and thank her. Because it's not your, her job. But even at that, Though the man may not have the money as you, though the man may not be as smart as you, bringing all the naira, all the dollar, whatever you call it, and even the house you are living, you are the one that built it, the car is ready, you don't that buy it, even everything in the house is just for you. That does not remove the fact that you should respect him, adore him. Let him feel important that you are married to him. Let him feel important that without him, you could have been nothing as a woman. Every man wants that. If you don't give it to him, even though it's jobless, he will look for another woman. Am I making sense? Even though it's not, things are not going the way it's supposed to be. He will begin in his heart, in his way, begin to be last. And before you know it, the possibility of another woman coming. A man wants to feel privileged, married to the woman that God has given him. Because of the role of the comfort or the rest that the home is, where all this is not, then the man begins to consider the possibility of another place in what he can go to. So a man by, by nature want the husband, a, a man want the wife to respect him, adore him, spoil him with love and humility, use her body to take care of him in every way and in Norway. Not that because he doesn't have a job or the money he's bringing is not much, you cook his food. That is Timothy. I would assume that is Timothy in the house. That is Timothy on the empty radio that's been kitchen. And that man, it may be five funeral he has. And in go to his office, he gave his, he may be, he might even be a cleaner. It might be anybody in the office. Give her that five naira. If he give you 20 naira at home, it's small. And it is actually small. But in his work, if he give that lady five naira, the following day, the lady will need her. I had a share now. Thank you very much. Lady adore him as though you are giving him a million. The possibility of loving that one that respects him. And begin to hate the one that did not respect him is high. Are you making sense? And that's why men are like boys. As a matter of fact, there's a boy in every man. The boy in man, if you have a boy with a woman, if you are giving a boy, you can even try it. Pick any boy in our church. Be giving that boy biscuits every Sunday. As I come and bring biscuits every Sunday. The day you didn't bring biscuits, the boy will come to you and say, I'm playing with you. He's playing with you not because he actually wants to play with you, but because he's expecting what? Biscuits. That's a, that boy in all of us men. 
and women must deal with that boy. If you are dealing with your husband as a man, we make a big mistake. But that's not for you. To, I don't have time for women today. Praise the Lord. So there is a possibility for this man, even though it's not his plan, it's his nature. It's the nature of the man to look to, to migrate to a place where he gets respect. It's the nature of the man to migrate to a place where he has comfort. It's in, it's in the man to naturally want to migrate to a woman, to be close to a woman that show him concern, affection, advice. He came on today, asked for something as a woman, I don't know. Tomorrow, ask you another thing. This is what happened in my office. This is what happened. Ah, I don't know what to say. Next time he asks you again, I don't know. Every time you ask him for your advice or discussing with you about his work, you never know. You are not even interested in his work. Maybe it's a tailor, has an office somewhere, or it's a mechanic. You don't go to his office. You are not interested to his workplace. But here's another person somewhere else. Daddy Timothy, a car or what is that? Daddy Timothy, a any journey around Teleman Jan, eleven to Lou at home. If you get home, seven o'clock, if you sit in the sitting room, nine, ten, his wife doesn't care that you eat or not. But somebody somewhere is monitoring his food and say, Daddy, have you eaten? Ah, every day you eat uh, bonny. Don't worry, tomorrow I'll cook rice for you. And the woman brought rice, and this rice is very sweet. And the one at home never bothered about money food. But the judge let the fellow along. Tell me, if you are the woman, where will your heart be going to? If you are the man. It's natural for men to want to migrate like that. Now, if all these negativities are in your marriage, you will be, you, it will be very funny that you see that things might not be going home the way it be. The first thing that you see the woman, the man, begin to silently hate the woman. The other room will be any time you just have it. If there is any man that stay in the same roof, under the same roof with a man, with a woman. If the man is working in Lagos, you are in Badon. It's a different thing. The other day, my wife traveled and she came home and I was briefing somehow towards her and was asking me, ah, how about if I travel? I said, that is if you travel. Any man that is under the same roof with a man for two, two weeks, he didn't touch you and you didn't bother yourself, you know that something is wrong somewhere. Two weeks. Something is wrong somewhere. As long as a man is mating with his wife, that marriage cannot fall. The first division in a home is not prayer, that you not pray together. That is the last. The first is always from the inside. As long as a man is mating with his wife, that marriage will last. So if you allow all these things, the possibility is there that the man may begin to misbehave over time. But here we are as men. The qualification is that you must be a man of one wife. Even though all these affirmations are there, and there's possibility of you being attracted towards another woman, because deservingly so, the one at home is not giving you rest or comfort. If you allow that as your wife, as a woman, as a man, you allow your wife to push you to things that you will not ordinarily do, the possibility of losing your home is high. Losing your marriage, losing your home is high. The possibility of you even missing heaven is high. And the possibility of you cutting your own life short is also high. Have you heard of late, maybe I hear listening to news, that one of the commonest things now is that men slump and, and died. And it's always men. Am I saying something now? Aside stress, and most men are stressed. Even me, I'm stressed. I told my wife, I said, the only one major way to release stress from a man is to mate with him. Most men are naturally stressed because of the, the, the desire to look for money. Even with our pastors, we are stressed. How much money? Those are working in bank, working in uh, other places of work, working anywhere you may be working. Men are naturally stressed, even mentally stressed. Thinking every day, and that was such a morning, he was thinking of how, what to feed his family, and was having a headache. 
How many of you are in the class that, that morning? Was having a headache. Men are naturally stressed. If you now add your own stress, please be following as much as possible. I will soon be running up. Amen. If you now add your own stress to his stress, and there is somebody somewhere that may be willing to reduce that stress for him, the possibility of him going there is high. But even at that, as a man, if you allow your wife to push you to that end, you may be cutting your life short. Because most men that slum and died, aside stress, one of the reasons that are killing them is that their mind is not at peace. I've never seen a man that has two wives. Either if the two are inside or one is outside. I've never seen a man like that have peace. There can never be rest of mind as long as you're dealing with two women. You cannot have rest of mind. You can't. So, is that the man is not at peace? It's not enjoying his peace. Then the man, because he's already involving himself with things that like, ordinarily shouldn't do. Number one, with God, is in trouble. Number two, with his wife, is in trouble. With himself, is in trouble. His man is not at peace. His BP begins to what? To rise. One day, if care is not taken, he must slump. Oh, Lord, yeah. I want to be like that in Jesus' mighty name. So to avoid cutting your own life short, don't allow your wife to push you to what? To what you didn't do ordinarily. And a man like that, want to fulfill these scriptures and this qualification we have talked about, we think of himself and say, look, I don't want to involve myself in another in the trouble, even the trouble of another woman. Not because I'm here women hear this. If any man is faithful to you and refuse to pick another wife, man, please hear this. If a man refuses to pick another wife, it's not really because he loves his wife. Take that off your mind. Somebody said a beautiful one is not yet born. My wife is the most beautiful woman. There are many women out there more beautiful than you. My wife is the most beautiful in the world. That may be true to some extent. But there are women out there that are more behaved than you. More respectful. More adoring. You know how you treat your guy in his workplace now? If you are working with your guy as a woman, my mommy here, what, I, I've seen her in her office before, greeting her guys. I know how you, they, you greet your guys, respect them. And that's how you see some guys that are interested in the women that work with them. Because the women respect them. And the one at home is not respecting him. So as a man, if you allow that to happen, there's possibility of giving yourself lack of peace in your heart. So if a man did not pick another woman, it's not because he loved his wife. It's one because he loved his own life. Man, what do I say? You love your own life. You love your rest of mind. You love to have your peace. You love your confidence. If a man has another woman outside his wife, if he loses his confidence, one before God, one, even his phone. If you see your phone, your, your, your wife's hand. Even that one is killing enough. Are you not hearing me? Are you not If your, 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 your heart just breaks suddenly, it's killing enough. It disrupted your heart and the way your blood flow. Before you know it, your blood prayer is rising small, small. Amen? So, to save your own life, stay with one woman. Forget that it is even on spiritual, but start with your own self. To save your own life, your own peace, your own confidence with God, to save your own faith, your friendship with your God, first and foremost, stay with your wife. Then secondly, I said first one, a man will not pick another woman because he loves his own life. Secondly, because he loves his children. That's the two reasons why you will not pick another woman. You love your life, you love your children. Most men do all they could. Sometimes the last one, that's we are here, and the men, somebody said, what? And it's a general belief that my wife did not respect me because I didn't have enough money. And most men begin to struggle and struggle to make more money. But the more you make the money, the more our needs increase. The Bible says, it that loves silver cannot be satisfied with silver. You can never please a woman with money. No man can give a woman everything she needs. 
no man. So by wisdom, by God, you can satisfy your wife. So the man choose not to have another wife and qualify himself the kind of men that God is looking for, not because the woman is nice, not because the woman is good, not because the woman is respectful, but because he loves his own life. And secondly, because he loves his children. And that brings it that to love your wife requires intentional decision. It's not about discipline alone. About it requires intentional de- to love your wife. It requires intentional decision to say, I will not have another woman. It's an intentional decision. You can only do it when you deliberately say, I will do it. And you ask for help from God. By nature, no man can keep a woman. By our being. But if you ask God, and God is in your life, and you ask him to help you, then it might be possible to stay with a woman and be the husband of one wife. That's the first qualification. Then now say, having faithful children. You can only have faithful children when you are committed to them. I've never seen a man that have two families, two homes. One somewhere, and that one somewhere. And all the children from both sides are committed to him. No. At the end of the day, they will side, and it's always their mother. If you love your life, sir, and you love your children, and you don't want your children to push you, I mean, don't want your, your wife to push your kids or children in the future, stay there and pray that God's chanting for you. No man can raise faithful children unless he has taught them that he's committed to them. And number one way you can tell your children that you are committed to them is that you are committed to their mother, irrespective of who she is. The only way you can, the first way you can tell your children you are committed to them because you are the one they will see first before they even see your God, is that you are committed to their mother. And don't you don't know. Just of late, a child called me about 17, 18 years old. The, what I'm telling you now, the mother doesn't know. The girl called me and said, oh, talk to me, chat me. And I said, okay, I'm free, whenever you are free. About, I think be 17 or 18. And we talked. And the girl was giving me low down details of why she believed her father has another woman. And I said, man, I know she was saying the truth. Both from what he has seen in his phone, from the way the man jealously guide his phone, from the way the man talk to them, from the way the man treat his wife, from the way the man treat them as children, and many other things. She gave me her reasons why she believed his father has another woman. And I was asking, I said, all this thing you told me, is your mother aware? See, my mother doesn't know anything. She doesn't even suspect any of this thing. Only me that knows. Have you asked him? Say, I will not ask him. I have not asked him. Because of if I ask him, he will turn into to trouble. He will fight me. So I will not ask him. If you think your children don't know, you are deceiving yourself. They know. But they may be afraid to talk. But the truth is that they know. Amen. So, a man, only one man, say amen. 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 So, having faithful children, not accused of riots. The first way, I, the first thing I say you can, the first way to raise your faithful children, one, is that you are committed to your children. And number one way you can show your children that you are committed to them, they are committed to what? To their mother. Even before to your God. To their mother. I've never seen a child that come from a home. Somebody uh, of late, I'm talking to another person, and was saying that, um, you know, I've seen children before. I'm giving a true story of life. I mentioned their name, my wife, you know. We are the children, no the other woman or their father. And they used to even go there to get the woman. But that the father, the children knows that that is happening. And they agree. I've never seen a child. You can help me investigate. I've never seen a child. There are six children, I'm talking about, in their teenager, teenagers. 
I've never seen a child that grew up to be a man or a woman and one day say, God, I thank you for my daddy. The best thing my daddy do, did is to take another wife when my mother is still alive. Have you seen that before? No matter how bad the mother is, immediately you choose another woman because she's pushing you, because she's unfriendly, because she's disrespectful, because she will not do what a woman should do to the husband. Immediately you choose another woman, you have stoned to your children that I'm no longer committed to you. And they will never thank God for you on that behalf. And from that on, you have lost, lost their love. They will never love you. That same woman that you think is bad, it is the same woman they will see end up migrating to. So therefore, to raise faithful children, be faithful to your wife. I mean faithful, yes. And to raise faithful children, introduce your children to your God. May God bless our men in Jesus' name. I was telling us that time you have me to hear that most men think that it is the duty of their wife to introduce their children to their God. You are making a big mistake. That's why in the house, if they are doing uh, family devotion, is the woman is coordinating it. The man, woman will be sleeping. I'm a honor to our family and back to the the woman will go with her children. It's at home sleeping. Tomorrow I have to work 7 a.m. I must go there. One day you'll be too tired to work. You'll be left with those children and their mother. That same woman you think is not good, and the children you are raising, they will see gang against you tomorrow. If you don't, you are not faithful to them. So therefore, you must introduce your God, your children, yourself. Don't wait for your wife to do it. Why are we pray in Jesus' name? Why are we going to church? Why are we Christian? These are things your children must know through you, sir. Not through their mom. So therefore, by so doing, you raise children that are not, that are not accused of riots. Riot means being weird in their dressing. If your child has one hole in the air and put another one to join as a father, you already failed. As a matter of fact, you don't tell your child, even as a wife. You may your wife have one hole. Add another one to it. As a father, you have gone. As I'm talking now, I'm talking now, ministry, and your wife is outside talking. As a father, you have failed. As a father, you have done what? You have failed. So, therefore, please, your children must not be weird in dressing. There is a Christian dressing. There is a Christian dressing of moderations. That's a way believer dress. And it's your duty to show your children that. Your girls and your boys. Amen. Children are now accused of white part, wide patterns. Wide behavior in church. Or unruly in behavior. Unruly in action. Disobedience. Your children are not accused of any of these things. That is a man that God is waiting for. And all this depends on your intentionality in loving their mother and be faithful to yourself, to, to them. Intentionally being a one, a man of one wife, it takes intentionality. It takes God asking him for help, asking him for wisdom, asking him for strength. As a matter of fact, no man can be faithful to a woman without the help of Jesus Christ. No man. Because you will see a hundred and one thing why that woman is not good. And immediately you begin to pick a fault in a woman, your heart will be drawn away from her. And the heart of man is never vacuum. As you are taking your love from her, small, small, you are throwing it somewhere, somewhere else. So you require the love of God in your heart to love your wife as yourself. And that's what is commanded. Husband, love your wife as yourself. The Bible never commands us to do anything if it's very easy. That's why there's no place to sit in. Everybody eat three times in a day. Isn't your Bible like that? Because eating is very easy. Everybody sleep and sleep well. Isn't your Bible like that? No. Because sleep is very easy. You can lie down and sleep. God give you sleep in particular. So it is it requires intentionality to love a woman. She's beautiful but very stubborn. Beautiful, very unruly, and very disrespectful. Sorry, come by. Just one word, bumbuni in the akun. 
I'm going to sit down and play Marono. Why you move by all long? Women like that, God will touch their heart in Jesus' name. So, to be committed to such a family, it requires the help of God. But no matter how bad that woman is, if you pick another woman and join her, your children will never say thank you to you. And they will never thank God on your behalf. So, a faithful man, the kind of man that God is looking for, a man as husband of one wife, and that be able to raise children that love God, faithful children. That's what they put there in that verse 7. I mean, verse 6, or that title of chapter 1. Faithful children. Faithful in all respects. And I said, it's not your wife's duty. Wife can only do it when the man is not there. By reason of death, by reason of indivision, by sickness, or whatever. But when you are alive, it is your duty to show your children the way of God. And the first thing in that verse, if a man be blameless without reproach. Now, how is he without reproach? I'm going to, I find from the big second one, one, a man of one wife. I went to a man faith, having faithful children. And I try to explain that. Faithful in their dressing. Faithful in their behavior. There are children in church that family will say, if I see you with that boy, if I see you with that girl, you see what I'll do with you. Even though they might be pastor's children, minister's children, or pa- children of a big man in the church, so you're shy to be faithful and to be unruly, to be, to be obedient, not unruly, not aware children. It must be because as a man, you have been faithful to your faithful at home to them. Two, you have shown them your God. And that early enough. Amen. Then a man not having reproach. Now, what does it mean to be a man not having reproach? A man that is not beating his wife first because he's a man of one wife. Let's take, for example, if SLM men, we call them a demons men, men fellowship, if they are to choose a leader and there is a man among them has one wife and we know that another woman, another family in Lesha, one in Ibadan, one in Lesha, and they are to choose SLM men, we didn't make him one. Why? Because he's having reproach. He might be a good man in Ibadan. As a matter of fact, my one of the senior or most, most uh, senior uh, financier of the church. It might be so nice in, the, in Ibadan. It might be a very wonderful man. As a matter of fact, the church knew that this man, or know that this man is a good man. Without him, the pastor can't do much. He has been giving his tithe regularly, paying his suffering, anything we are doing, is helping us. He's a wonderful man. By all standards, he should be our leader at SLM in a main fellowship. But somebody said, but I know this man has Another family in Indonesia. Immediately that information comes to our hearing. It's a man of re, re, what? reproach. We make him leader? No. We are looking for men. God is looking for men without reproach. You now understand what the Bible says when you're a man without reproach now. Let's say a 15 years old. They say they cash your girl 15 years on campus and uh, it went to sex party. You know, there are parties they call sex party where they dance naked and drink naked. A lady was telling me sometimes, she said she went to a party and at 12 in the night, they off the light and everybody must go naked. And somebody said, I saw your daughter there. Uh, me, I can go because I'm not a believer. I'm anybody, I, I, I'm not. But I know you, you, you say you are, you are born again, but your, your get was in a miss. Immediately you hear that as a man and you go to go and give them evangelism, see our threat. We are doing crusade next week. We did listen. Why? You are a man of what? Reproach. So, I always say that this man, no, um, he is a good man, but he has married before and he divorced his wife. Now, men fellowship wants uh, a man that will be our leader. But this man is a good man. But somebody now said, but it's a divorcee. There is no justification for divorce. It might not even be your fault as a man. When Adam ate the fruit and God came, who did God call first? Was Adam the reason for eating the fruit? 
Even to listen, you say, Bible say, man did not sin. It was the woman that sinned first and gave him to eat. But when God was to ask a question, who would they ask? Adam. So even when you are the one, when the woman is the one at fault and there is a divorce, you are seeing a man of what? Reproach. You are not fit to lead us. So there is no justification for reproach. Not a man that separates from his wife and say he's a good man, he has married. He say, man, can make him our, our elder, our leader in our house fellowship or in our as men. Though he, for some time now, for the past six months, he has separated from his wife because they are quarreling. Though he doesn't, he's not, he does not marry another one. No. Just that himself and his wife, they are not living together. The children, they divide them. Two are with him, two are with his wife. Now that we need a man to lead us as men, and uh, this man, we know he has been very faithful. On Tuesday, he will come. On Thursday, he's always there. There's no program we call, he will not come. We can make him our leader. As men, will you agree? Why? It's a man with a reproach. So God, that's why I told you that if you allow your wife to push you to do what ordinarily you shouldn't do, you will make yourself a man of reproach. So not a man of reproach. Not easily get angry, as you are saying, verse 7, that place. Not disrespectful man. He talked to his wife anyhow. There are men, I've seen it in the church before. What? Wambi? Yeah, well, don't you know. What? Wambi? Yeah, well, you know. If he's doing that in church, how more at home? Now, you want to use and want to choose an elder that will lead the men. You go and choose him as your elder. Why? He's a man of uh, reproach. May our men not be a man of reproach in Jesus' name. Or oh, on Sunday like this, his girl coming to church, there's an earring in her nose. That is first daughter, 18 years old, and put an earring in her nose. Though she's dressed well, but there's one earring in her nose. And she came with her boyfriend. Though they are all in church, they are not outside the church. It's a sinner inside the church. And he's sitting there at the back. Now you have to choose a man to lose to lead excellent men, the married men. Will you choose him as a, even though he's a good man, will you choose him? Why? He has failed over his girl. He's a man of reproach. But the truth is that it may not even be his fault. But all the same, he's a man of what? They are not answering me. So God is looking for a man without reproach. Or he's a drunk. Though on Sunday we wear tight on my own, he won't drink. But on Friday night, we all know his joints. And by chance, we have seen him there before. Who is he? He's a man of what? Reproach. Now the question is, as men, if you are to choose men without reproach, having one wife, will you be on the list? That's the question we ask ourselves. If you are to choose a man and they ask your wife, you are to choose your husband as the man leader, as a wife, will you say, Pastor, in all sincerity, I know my husband though, is a man of reproach. Or you may say, ah, I need to more. What you need now? What do we need to catch you? Men, are you a man of honor or a man of reproach? A man of one wife. All we know for sure, you are not. All we may not even know, but yourself you know, you are not. Can you just bow down here and talk to God this morning? But I have to talk and say, Father, please help me. I want to love my wife, irrespective of who she is. She may be disrespectful, I want to love her the same. She might not be honoring me as I want as a man, but I want to love her the same. She might not be a good woman I expected her to be, but I want to love her all the same. I want to be a man of one wife, not having wrinkle, not having reproach. I want to be a faithful man to myself first and to my children. Not even to her as a person, but to myself first and to my children. Therefore, I must love her intentionally. As a wife, what are you doing to help your husband at home? Pray for yourself. Father, please help me. 
Nothing happened that God will say, Adam, what have you done? It is your my wife. If God is to ask your husband, will you be blamed? Don't forget, God punished Adam and punished Eve for what she did. If your husband is to meet God one on one today and she's to account for herself, will he say, God, I did all that happened to me because my wife pushed me to it? And if God to ask you, Madam, will you have an excuse for doing it? Will you blame the devil? The serpent. What will you have? What will you do when you get to God? Will you say I'm the one that put this man out because I refuse to respect him because he doesn't have money? Will you say God, I'm put this man out because I refuse to respect him because I'm more intelligent than him or I'm making more money than him? What will be your excuse, man? Husband, are you a man with one wife? Are you a man that is faithful to his own children? Are you a man that actually love yourself, love your peace, love your God? Are you a man without reproach? Ask God, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Father, please help me. This thing I had, no man can do them unless you help me. This thing I have beyond me. It is good to be sincere with God. It's good. Lord, if you leave me alone with this woman, I will misbehave. Please help me. Lord, the way I'm going now, if it's me alone, I will end in hell. I am a faithful father. I'm a faithful husband. Please help me. May I pray for yourself. Please help me in the mighty name of Father. Father, please help me. Father, please help me. Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me. Help me. I need your grace. Without your help, I can't do it. I need your grace. I need your grace. Father, please help me. All these things, I've seen the qualifications of a faithful man and elder in the church. Men that you are looking for. Men that are without reproach. Husband of one wife. Faithful to their own children and raising faithful children. Father, please help me in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we be on our feet? You know, as we are praying, I'm looking at our children. Many of them are not closing their eyes. They are not even praying. Maybe they thought it is not meant for them. And that shows our men. Teach your children to learn to close their eyes when they are praying. Don't leave it for your wife to do. Teach your children how to take posture when they are praying. Please, it's your duty. Don't live for your wife. Your wife will fail. That's why you are still alive. If you are not alive, she can do the work of two people. But you are alive. Don't waste your opportunity, sir. Teach them how to respect God. How to behave in church. You say, Father, please help me. As a woman, pray for yourself. Father, please help me. I will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. I will not fail over my family. As a woman, I will not fail over my husband. I will not be the heath in his life, but I will be the Sarah that help him. I will be the Mary that help him. I will be the, the Elizabeth that help him. In the mighty name of Jesus, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Pray for your husband. Pray for your husband. Men, pray for yourself. Please, Father, help me. Help me, Father. Help me, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, please help me. Father, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Father, please help me. I will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. I will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. I will not fail. Father, please help me. No woman will push me against God. I've made up my mind. No woman will push me against God. Father, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Father, please help me in Jesus' mighty name. Please pray for yourself, husband, wife, that God will help you. Pray for yourself, God will help you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, please help me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, please thank for this morning. Thank you for how you have spoken to us as men and as children in your hand. Thank you for our wife that you have blessed us with. He said, glory to your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we know by nature, by our sex, by our strength, we can't do these things. No man can stay with a woman without the help of God. Father, please, arise to our help. Amen. Please, arise to our help. Please arise to our help. Amen. Sometimes we even want to do it, but our women are not helping. And that's how we pray for our women. Please make them wise women. Amen. The Bible says a wise man will build a house. She built her house by building her husband, loving him, faithful to him, respecting him, not making him to look like a fool inside his own house. Father, please. 
help our women in Jesus' mighty name. God will make you wise women that build their house, build her children. A woman that will sit down, her children will call her blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray for women that are carrying the load all alone. You are the husband or the widow. Father, please arise on their behalf. Be the father to their children. And I pray for men that are in the house. God will not do for man what man should do for himself. If a man is not alive, God knows how to bridge the gap. But as long as a man is alive, God will not do for man what man should do for his children. Father, please help us as a man. We will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. And when we meet on with you one by one, may we not be like Adam having excuses. In the mighty name of Jesus. Make up men like Abraham. Men like Zechariah. Men like Joseph. For one good year, this man was married to this woman, but nothing happened to them. And yet, he was faithful to her. Lord, make us men like that in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to your holy name. Bless our children. May them faithful children. May no, for any reason, we raise on faithful children in Jesus' mighty name. Are there children that are already raising, growing up to be unfaithful, rioting, wild, on, on the partying with unbelieving men and women out there? Please touch their hearts. Bring them home again. And men and women, maybe to ourselves, not bring repose to our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And a good man will chat a better amen. A wonderful mother, beautiful wife, chat a good amen. God bless you.